WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore positive. Uh, I don't know how positive it's going to be around here this week. We are going to get the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. And in the meantime, we will be discussing a uh, rather creative loss on Sunday afternoon at the hands of the Buffalo Bills. Luke Jones joins us now. He is, of course, Baltimore Luke out on the uh, social media thing. And our intrepid reporter now going alone into the locker room trying to get answers uh, from just uh, just a hideous loss, dude. Like, I mean, two back-to-back hideous home losses. Um I don't want to put John Harbaugh on alert, but this is how things go south uh, when you have angry players on the sidelines trying to get after the coach. Well, they're not playing winning football when it matters uh, against really good teams. Uh, As I wrote at BaltimorePositive.com, you can hang your hat on beating a 37-year-old Joe Flacco in the New York Jets. You can hang your hat on the post-Tom Brady New England Patriots, uh, a win in Foxborough, which look, it, they're road wins. I, I don't want to completely diminish them, but at the same time, those aren't the kind of wins that you point to and say, that's a team with championship medal, right? Uh, the wins that you point to are dismantling the Miami Dolphins, who to a concussion saga aside for just a moment, have looked pretty good through the first quarter of the season. And the Buffalo Bills, who entered 2022 as the Super Bowl favorite. Those are the kinds of wins that you should have in hand. Keep in mind, Nestor, I looked at this. Uh, I had to go back a couple years in the Ravens media guide. But over their first 26 seasons in Baltimore, they had exactly three losses in which they blew a 17-point lead or more. They've done that twice in the last three weeks now, and they've done it at home. Three times in 26 years. I'm trying to think of the three. Yeah, I'm just on the top of my mind. I'm thinking, like, when did the defense give up three touchdowns ever in the history of this organization with a three touchdown lead? I I, 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 like off the top of my head. Do you did, did you have those dates? I have them right in front of me. Go ahead. The, the the first one you would remember, and we mentioned this a couple weeks back because they blew a 21-point lead. It was Cordell Stewart running all over them in 1997 at Memorial Stadium. When well, you know why up. I don't remember that? Because I was in the car on the way to the Orioles-Mariners game. There you go. That's why I don't remember that. <laughs> I remember hearing Scott Garceau saying, and hey, Cordell Stewart's going 88 yards yeah. for it, or whatever it was. I mean, yeah, I do remember that. So, And that was like almost unfair because like the team stunk and the defense well, stunk and there's a reason they gave up 12. well <laughs> 97 and let, ravens let me continue that was 1997 the the second largest lead they had blown to lose a game was november of 1996 against cincinnati when they had an 18 point lead and by the way that was a game i went to uh, and then was the that other a Jeff game, Blaker? what was that 96 no, that, that was 1996 okay you know that would be a boomer we th- we think about that 1996 team being four and 12. Go back and look. They had lots of leads in games that they ended up blowing. I mean, everyone kind of says, well, the defense stunk and Vinny threw because they were behind. That's not entirely accurate. They, they had lots. I went to some of those games. <laughs> you know, they didn't win any of them, uh, and they had chances to win. I and know they the didn't other... win the Jay Graham game. I remember that. <laughs> right, right. But, and then the other one w- was in 2004. That was the Carson Palmer Cincinnati Bengals game where the Ravens blew a 17 point lead in that one. So I remember my father-in-law was here. That was the, the day that was Marvin's first game um, there. And yeah, yeah. My father-in-law was, I remember that Van Brooks had a big event. At, I re- that was a hideous, uh, like that was a meltdown of biblical proportions. That, that was one that better never happen again. And it hasn't happened in 20 years. Well, and, and it's happened <laughs> twice now in three weeks. So look, as I wrote at baltimorepositive.com, there's plenty of blame to, to throw around. You can talk about John Harbaugh's decision, which by the way, analytically speaking, backed up by multiple resources. So There's that side of it, but there's also the practical side of it. And I'm sure we'll dive into that in a a few moments. There's an offense that didn't score again after the three minute, 339 mark, uh, 339 to go in the first half uh, when they went up 20 to three. And a defense that, let's face it, did a heck of a job keeping Buffalo out of the end zone uh, until late in the first half. And if you go into that game telling me that the defense only gives up 23 points, I'm saying, hey, it's the Bills. Uh, that That's really not that bad. But when you look at it through the lens of you gave up three uh, and then, you know, through the first, you know, 20, you know, uh, first 29 minutes of the game, 
and then you give up 20 after that, you let them score on four of their five final drives, then we're talking about a defense again with an inability to finish. There were examples of poor clock management. Go back to the first half. Justin Tucker bailed out John Harbaugh and, and this, this team's inability to manage the clock, turning a 46-yard field, uh, field goal into a 51-yarder. Uh, there's Adafi Owe on the final drive doing something different from everyone else when, when they were pretty clearly trying to let the Bills score. So Lamar and the offense had another chance. Go back to the busted coverages a couple weeks ago against Miami. Those types of things late in games are not indicative of a well-coached football team. So we can talk about the coaching. We can talk about the offense. We can talk about the defense. We can talk about Lamar Jackson, who has been phenomenal by and large, but that was not an MVP play on that fourth down interception, which made that, you know, part of going forward on fourth down there is you're working under the assumption that even if you throw it out of the back of the end zone, Buffalo's at the two yard line, then they're, they're backed up at their own goal line. But when you throw a pick there, it's like you just punted it through the end zone, right? I mean, you give them a, you know, a, a, the 20 yard line and, and, you know, new life. So there's just so in a much tie on... game, by the way, not, not, not yeah. a three point lead in a tie game. Oh, sure. Well, and, and again, we, we can, I don't really have a problem with the decision. Well, you're an analytics guy, and, and I'm not saying that that's not that, – that's being a scientist, right? Like, literally, sure. that's a math scientist is to be an analytics guy. You're further along that trail than most reporters, certainly further along it than, than I am, although I respect it, and I respect the fact that in your lead story uh, – you can read this out at Baltimore Positive – Luke writes, the analytics are paragraph two for you that John followed the script. And that's what John's going to say when John has his press conference without some members of the media there to ask questions that he's going to go to the script, which say we we followed the analytics. I mean, we just we did what the analytics said. And then anytime he doesn't follow the analytics, he'll say, well, my gut Mm -hmm. right then and my gut and my gut and my gut. Well, the gut for anybody in the history of the game would have been tie game, three yards, wet conditions, home field allegedly you believe in your defense. You believed in them long enough that they gave Doesn't. up just 20 points all day. But you, you, in the rain, at home, you would say, I'd rather have a three-point lead than potentially turning the ball over here. I'd rather have four minutes with three more points on the scoreboard and let my team, because we do draft defensive players, we scout oh. defensively, we train defensively, that we should be able to put these guys on the field And Luke, I'll let you go nuts on the analytics, but I'll be honest with you. When they were up early in the game, I thought they have some championship medal here. You know what I mean? The Calais Campbells and the really good players, the the Humphreys and the Peters, the guys making big bucks, the guys that talk about their heart and soul and we're Ravens and all that. They're not going to, there's no way they're going to let this happen again. That's what I thought in the second quarter. I thought this is trouble for the Bills. It's wet, coming back, all of that. I'm sort of astonished that John Harbaugh had no confidence in his defense to say we can't play with a three-point lead at home, that that's not, I don't say good enough, but not better than the alternative of maybe getting nothing here because they've been a little stout in short, and we haven't been good in short distance. We have have not been a good short distance team across now the quarter pole of the season that he would say, I got the best kicker on earth. Let's go three points kick the ball away and let's let's make a stop instead of in the post game whining about well they'd have four downs dude they'd have four downs no matter what because they're trying to win the game man you know yeah i i hear you and first of all you you need you don't need to listen any further than when he said and i think we'll get them stopped he doesn't think that because they would have kicked a field goal if he actually thought he that. lies and, more at the podium too. Well, sitting out here watching on TV. I want to jump through the television not, sometimes. But Nestor, he's Nestor, dishonest. when I'm in the co- room with him, I don't feel it as much. I'll be honest. I, I hear you on that. But any coach who says flat out there that I don't think my defense is going to get the stop there. What's that saying? Yeah. You have to remember there's what a guy's going to say publicly and what's going on behind closed doors or more more like in in this instance what's going on inside his mind and in his heart so i'll hear you on that but well his heart is always lamar's going to get three yards we've seen that for four years right like that is his belief system lamar's going to do it because lamar's superman that 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 is that's the team now that that's their strategy at this point 
Sure, sure. And and the other thing I would say, I mean, it, it's great to keep talking about kicking a field goal. And look, I will fully acknowledge there potentially being something to the idea of what we're what we're talking about right now when, when we're saying we don't believe John Harbaugh when he says uh, in the post game that he thinks they'll get a stop. I think the defense knows that too. I, I when <laughs> when you're going back to the end of last year, and look, they were banged up, and, and we can talk about six losses in a row to close the season. And Lamar wasn't on the field for the last four, really almost full five games at the end of the year. We can chalk all of that up to injuries. However, there were a lot of players that played at the end of last year uh, that are on the field now. You know, they're, they're, it's not as though they had, you know, literally 22 replacement players at that point. They weren't that injured, uh, but we're seeing a lot of the same things happen. And as much as we can talk about the analytical decision uh, to go for it in that situation, which I'm reading the tweets right now, Brian Burke from ESPN says, solid go for the Ravens on their last possession. Next gen stats, decision guys, guide had this as a quote, slight go situation uh, where it increases your odds compared to kicking the field goal. Aaron Schatz from Football Outsiders, their model said it was the right decision. However, there's more to that than just the math. You have the play call to consider, and we talked about this at the end of last year with some of these two-point plays, and keep in mind they were at the two-yard line, which is where you are on a two-point conversion. Questioning the play call there. Now, you can say Devin DuVernay was open earlier in the pattern, and Lamar Jackson didn't see him soon enough, but uh, what about the pressure? What about the blitz uh, that was giving them problems as Buffalo uh, was doing that? Uh, what about the fact that your top receiver, Rashad Bateman, was not on the field, whether he was hurt or been benched? We know this is not a deep wide receiver group. So it, you had Mike Davis on the field, who, let's face it, hasn't done anything uh, as a Raven uh, because Justice Hill was hurt and J.K. Dobbins was not in uh, in that situation. So you have to consider the personnel there. You, you of course, consider game situation. Uh, but I do wonder, and again, I'm an analytics guy. Generally speaking, I didn't really have a problem with the decision to go, but all the other factors at work here, I do wonder if there's something to the idea with the rain, understanding that Justin Tucker kicking there is a chip shot. I mean, that, that's not even a chip shot. It's a one-inch putt. Uh, that, that's how uh, confident you are there. Is there something to the idea of, and you mentioned some of these instances where John Harbaugh's talked about his gut, where you kick and say, all right, defense, go out there and get a bleep and stop because we're paying you guys a lot of money to do that. And we need to do, to do that if we're going to be a championship team. I'll hear that. I'll, I'll certainly hear that. But you know, the one thing I would say is we're talking about kicking a field goal. Uh, the Bills got down to the two-yard line. Uh, you know, what about that final drive lead you to believe that kicking a field goal would have led to a better outcome for the Ravens? I don't know. You know does it change things from a psyche standpoint? That's, that's impossible to say right now, but I just look at the entire the, the entire pie here, so to speak, in terms of uh, giving out blame, and there's a lot to go around. And uh, again, I go back to the OA play, and look, probably doesn't matter you know, uh, if we're being honest, but there's a, a very simple example of this team not doing little things well uh, in crunch time to close out these wins. And, and right now, this looks like a team that doesn't know how to win and know how to finish. Well, finishing really off the quarterback balls. after he threw the ball and bringing him to the ground and having Harbaugh say he didn't hit him in the head or whatever. Like, I, I don't, I, that's just not smart football. I, 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 you know, Marcus Peters losing his mind, which I saw on the field in LA two years ago, right when he yeah, came well. over, he was going to kill Jalen Ramsey. You can go back and watch that ad on YouTube security everywhere out on the field at the LA Coliseum after we kicked their ass in the purple uniforms, by the way, uh, that were pretty good to us two years ago. I, I, I see a lack of, of discipline. I see some self-control and I see a team that's not good enough. Like on top of all of that, I see a running game. That's not, good enough. I see a defensive side that clearly the coach doesn't think they're good enough to hold a three point lead to hold their water at home across the length of a wet field. Um, I, I, I'm worried for them. And it, it's interesting that when they had the lead in, in the second quarter, I started to feel like, well, they've got this thing together. And I know when I wrote last week after they won in new England, I felt like all right, this thing's going to get better, and it might get better if they beat the snot out of Cincinnati Sunday night. I don't know how that's going to happen, but maybe they can't tackle Lamar on Sunday night. I don't know. But I know this is as rough a week around that building, given the losses, given the confidence level, 
given what happened with Peters at the end of the game and the nonsense, which is that's Rex Ryan nonsense, right? That's not that Harbaugh doesn't go for that. That that's Bernard Pollard yelling at the quarterback on Twitter 10 years later, that, that, that show, John Harbaugh is not going to take kindly to that. I, I, I just don't think he is. And I think they respect Marcus Peters, the player. I know Ozzie loves him. I know Eric loves him. I know the, they love him on the field, but they better get their house in order this week. This, this, this is, this could get bad quickly after a year where they didn't win last year. I mean, they didn't win for two months last year, that this is not the kind of start that they need to get off to. And I'll say this, and I know this has been pointed out. And just if we're looking into the crystal ball, I mean, Billick would always say quarters, take these four games, then these four games, then these four games. They have kind of a soft schedule. You know what I mean? Like they have some games ahead of them that if they're losing games to some of these teams, they're not a very good team. And one thing to lose to Buffalo, one thing to lose to Miami with Tua and that whole head thing. And you and I haven't discussed that disaster where Harbaugh's beginning his Friday press conferences, urinating another, upon another team based on their decisions. And then he makes a decision 48 hours later that turns out to not smell so good on Monday morning. But I, I, I am I'm worried about them. I, I don't I don't smell what they're cooking right now. Yeah. One thing I will say, and look, we didn't get many details with the Marcus Peters thing. I'll, I'll look at it through a different perspective. I want a few more guys ticked off. You just Fair embarrassed enough. yourself twice, uh, two, two times at home in three weeks. Uh, you mentioned Bernard Pollard. You mentioned Rex Ryan. Those def- Bernard Pollard won a Super Bowl. You know, <laughs> we, we can talk about the drama or we can talk about you know, the idiotic Twitter <laughs> fighting with Lamar Jackson over the summer or anything like that. But, hey, they won a Super Bowl. You're talking about a Super Bowl champion there. Those Rex Ryan defenses were a hell of a lot better than what we're seeing right now from the Ravens defense. So I'm not saying you, you know, you, you need, you need to be so ticked off that you're restrained. You need to be restrained from your head coach, but maybe they need a little more dog in them in that way with some of these guys. Maybe some of these guys are a little too satisfied with what they think is in front of them and how good they were in 2019. Guess what? 2019. Well, you know was what? I, I mean, I, I follow these guys on Twitter now because I'm thrown out of the locker room, right? So the only only access I have to Marlon Humphrey and Patrick Queen uh, is their social media. And yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not sold on all in teamwork. We're all, you know, like I I don't feel that. I feel a, a group of individuals from the outside. I'm not on the inside. I haven't been on the inside in three years. So that that is not for me to say. It's just for me to say from the outside to say this is a self-confident group of people who haven't won ish. It, it literally haven't they've won contracts, they've won money, but they haven't won football games when it matters. And when nut cut time came on Sunday, you know, they they yeah. they they didn't show up, and that's twice now at home. Look, we're gonna take a break. I, I want you to get into Lamar. We're gonna get back into Marcus Peters, get into the Bengals this week, and certainly what Josh Allen did. Um, we're gonna be doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. It's all presented by the Maryland Lottery, in conjunction with our friends at Goodwill, Window Nation, and of course our friends at the Restaurant Association of Maryland. We just celebrated a great restaurant. We've had a great crab cake tour stop over at the Beaumont. I hope everybody listens to Lou Winecam, Howard Share, uh, my dear friend Billy Yerman stop by as well. We are gonna be having some beverages. Uh, We're going to be getting out, having some more crab cakes before it's all over with. Hope you're following Luke all week long from Owings Mills. You can follow him at Baltimore Luke. And, of course, I'm out on social media as well. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Ravens football in a tough week. And BaltimorePositive.com.